Chris, what's a what's what's a trick on killing them big deer on the public land? Don't shoot them in horns. <laughs> Don't shoot them in antlers. I heard that helps. Is that what you did last year? That was two years ago. What'd you do last year? I didn't shoot a buck last year. Oh, okay. So you don't know the trick to killing big public and white tails. <laughs> Junior, what's the, what's the trick to killing big public land white tails? Go sit in the woods. <laughs> Go sit in the woods. <laughs>tennessee public land challenge for our group of guys there's seven eight guys up here and, uh, we're going to try to get after them but it's morning one first chance i've got an opportunity to do it in an intro this morning we've got deer all over us this morning but uh seen a pretty decent little 105 110 inch eight point that, that uh, made a scrape and then eased off but uh, a couple of the small bucks and, and does but it's looking good we got a good north wind uh weather's okay it's uh about 70 degrees but we're on the fringe of this bedding area off this point. And uh, I know there's some decent deer in here from last year. So we're gonna not going to push in on them real hard yet. I think it's still early. I think the rut's not really kicking in. But I am seeing a few smaller bucks that are chasing. And they've got their nose on the ground. They're definitely getting in the mood. So it's that time of year. But uh, stay tuned. We're going to try to kill us a big public land giant. try something different you know this morning was a great hunt wasn't nothing wrong this morning's hunt but uh the wind's up it's hot there's a water source out in this crp so i'm gonna try to get out here and get to a good observation stand and uh see what we can't come up with but you know it's the first evening it's about 75 degrees and we've got a pretty stout wind but i'm seeing some good bucks on in here and uh 
I'll show you some of it here in just a minute. But we're gonna get in here and I'll show you a little bit of this sea arc. You see it's a big field, super thick with willows. Uh, quite a bit of buck sign in here too, so we're gonna push in here just a little bit, not too far, just far enough to where I can get up in a tree and maybe get some eyes on these deer and see what's in here. All right, guys, so day one is over of the public land challenge. We got the guys here tonight. We have figured out real quick that it is tough. It is very tough. So we've got temperatures 70 to 80 degrees, full moon. It is, it is awful conditions, and we're not seeing a lot of deer moving, but uh, even the guys aren't seeing a whole lot you know, that's moving around. So we're... We're uh, we're gonna keep pushing. We're gonna we're gonna break it down and try to figure out what these deer are doing. I know the the mature bucks are not really moving except for daylight and dark. We we've, we've kind of seen that already, but uh, we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep after it and keep keep trying to find these deer. But uh, like I said, our big deer is not really moving yet. We got a lot of young bucks chasing, and uh, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to keep going. Ten yards, five yards. All right, guys, what's up? So it's the end of our hunt. We're back home. We made it back. We saw a couple really nice deer down there. Um, really struggled. I really had a hard time, and uh, I ain't ashamed to say that. It, we had really tough conditions. We had a full moon the majority of the week. Uh, we had really hot conditions. Temperatures ranged in the highs from mid seventies to low eighties, and then on top of that, we had no water, no rain. All the creeks were dry. Uh, they had been going through quite a bit of a drought in the last month or two, which I really, I think, affected the deer. Uh, but we had a pretty good hunt um, overall. We saw some deer. Uh, didn't bag a big buck, but we did see a few. I know the guys that are still back there now, um, I got about 20, 25 contacts that are hunting this piece of public ground, which is a big piece of public ground, uh, during this week. And nobody killed anything during the entire week except for a couple of those until the last of the week when the temperature plummeted highs were in the 40s and all of a sudden guys are starting to sling some arrows and kill some bucks so and they killed some good deer too so i hate that you know we had to come back right before that cold front came through but we're going to talk a little bit about what we learned while we were down there and so we're looking at pre-rut to rut conditions i really think the rut was kind of going on it was it was starting but the heat really affected it but what we did is we learned that uh, these bucks, these mature bucks, were bedding the majority of the day. They were either locked down with a the doe, they stayed re in really thick cover. Uh, a particular unit that we hunted uh, had had two previous rifle hunts, so the, these were really high pressure deer, um, along with the weather and then the, uh, the moon phase, uh, which I'm not a huge moon phase guy, but uh, uh, it does play a big role when you've got a full moon and that's the coolest temperature. The deer are going to move at night. That's uh, common sense. So, but anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about what uh, what we did, what we learned, and how to hunt those deer. I think if I had to do it all over again, I would have changed my tactics completely. Uh, definitely would have pushed in really hard in those uh, those deer's bedroom, especially the mature deer. But uh, uh, deer were not leaving sign 
at all. Uh, there was very limited sign. They were typically pretty close to their bedding areas where they were leaving the best sign. So uh, it was a good indicator that you were close to a deer. But getting into them with the leaves, all the leaves were off the trees. It was really dry. They could hear you walking for a couple hundred yards away. So it was really tough to get in tight on these deer. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that I found. The drainages that we picked out, I tried to pick drainages that had water. I think that was a key thing, a key factor, because in a lot of these places, there's not big ponds or lakes or, or sustaining water sources. And, and this time of year, when those deer are starting to rut a little bit and they're starting to run, they're going to have to have water. So finding key water sources and then finding that thick bedding cover around it. Some of the areas that we hunted were super thick. Uh, they were really thick. Um, and they weren't high on the ridges this year. There's a lot of acorns down there. Those were like feeding areas, but the pretty woods we weren't seeing deer in. You had to be in the really thick stuff to see deer. And we were only seeing deer first light, first thing in the morning for the first hour to two hours at most, and then right at dark. And I saw two shooters while we were down there, and those two shooters were literally within that 30 minute window of daylight or dark. So, um, just tells me that those deer weren't moving. Now the immature deer, the small bucks, they were definitely moving a little bit, but during midday, it was it was a lull and it was super hot. And uh, especially on those ridges that got a lot of sun, uh, deer stayed away from them just because it was so hot. Um, what we did find is, is that the, a lot of the bucks, especially the mature deer, were bedding midway or in the bottom third of the hollers because it's A, close to water, and they were looking for really thick security cover. Um, I know we went pretty deep in some of these places a couple miles back and now nowadays with uh, public land hunters and, and stuff like this that, that people put out there um, those deer get hunted they get pressure uh, it, you know for e-bikes guys are pushing in farther than they ever have before uh, and a lot of the overlook spots I started looking for overlook spots you know close to the road etc and, and we started finding some deer and finding some deer sign but uh, a couple of the bedding points and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, point them out to you and just use a couple drainages for example. Now these are not, if you find them on a map, uh, a lot of the ridges that we picked were select cut ridges, uh, meaning that half the timber was cut, but uh, it, it allowed the undergrowth to grow up 10, 12 feet, something like that. Made it really hard to hunt, really hard to get in, but that's where those deer stayed because a lot of people would avoid that. They, you know, they look for the pretty woods, that's their, how they get into spots, etc. So. Uh, but that's where we were finding the mature buck sign, and we found a lot of it. A lot, found a lot of really big sign, a lot of a lot of big prints. And every two mornings in a row, uh, the buddy was hunting with me. He uh, saw a big mature shooter deer that came by him every morning. But the problem was, it was at breaking daylight, and the deer was always going to the same ridge to bed. And I ended up finding that deer's bed. And unfortunately, it was just one of those things that. It, he had it set up so right that it was almost impossible with the conditions that we had to get in there get close enough to him to get him on camera and, and get a shot on him during daylight. So, but what we were looking for is secondary and third points in these big hollers. And uh, that's what we hunted. And like I said, water was key. And it's one of those things when we were down there during this time frame of November uh, 1st to November 6th in that, uh, in that time frame, we had to really focus on those transition areas between thick bedding cover and doe bedding. And a lot of times we weren't finding that the mature bucks were bedding in the doe bedding areas or bedding close to it. Uh, they were just kind of, they were close uh, in an aspect of they were a couple hundred yards to a half a mile. Now let's talk about a little bit about what do you do when you're faced with those really hot pre-rut to rut conditions where you've got drought um, and just overall really bad conditions, meaning, you know, full moon, uh, what we had. How do you hunt those deer? Played the wind. We tried to get as close as we could to the known bedding area of, the, of those deer. And we hunted the transition lines in that middle range to that lower third. Um, that's what we were looking for. And so a lot of times when it gets so hot, you're gonna have thermals that are pulling up all day long. And so coming in from the bottom and coming up to those deer, because a lot of times those deer were in their bedding area before daylight. Uh, made it really tough, but getting a deer to come up to you when his first instinct all day uh, is to go get water is also really tough. Um, so uh, the wind played in the deer's favor a lot, and I got busted I think twice down there just because we had shifty winds, and uh, 
you know, when you've got a sustained wind, how the wind moves through those hollers and those ridges uh, can be different. And it's just the challenge of hunting hill country. Everybody knows that, or mountain country. Um, I was able to run into a couple of the public land guys, super great guys. So shout out to you guys if y'all are wa uh, watching. Hey, it's nice to meet you guys. I hope you guys kill a big one because you guys are down there when the weather is great. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys get a big one. But they were really informative. You know, it was one of those things. Those guys were hunting the same area that we were. They knew about the same deer that we did. And so they were going after them too. And, you know, we could put a game plan together. Hey, which way are you coming in? We work together. And so for you public land hunters, do that. I know one evening I had a guy come in and sit 100 yards from me. Um, he never knew I was there. But um, it's one of those things. I tried to whistle to him, et cetera, and let him know. And he's still set up. And it's... It happens. It's public land. It's not the not the end of the world. You just hunt and make the best out of it. Um, but you know, be cognizant of that too. So if you're a public land hunter, man, be courteous. You know, everybody's out there trying to get theirs. All right, but help each other out. Uh, but anyway, back to it. You know, we had a great time. It was a great hunt. It was a big learning experience for us. You know, now that the weather's changed, it's amazing how the bucks' patterns have changed. They're getting on their feet. I'm getting pictures now of some really great deer here back home. Uh, so hopefully with this weather change we're going to be able to get on a big buck um, but we learned a lot hot rut conditions play the water stay low and and stay towards the thick cover uh, we we did not see this year the deer that we have in the past there and i really attribute that to pressure pressure and then hot weather and the moon phase so it's one of those things you learn from it this is what we look for now. We, we know how to kind of hunt those deer, but it is tough. And when you're dealt tough conditions, you just got to deal with it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all soon.